It's a default play. In the case of China specifically, uh, the property markets have been very weak. The equity markets have been very weak. And this narrows the universe that investors, you know, big and small, are likely to look for. And, and gold uh, is a great safe haven. Now, we're seeing the same thing abroad, but the equity and property markets haven't fallen abroad. And in the case of uh, Western markets, I think what we've seen is asset managers, right. portfolio managers, uh, and the like have recognized that equities are very high. Uh, they have no choice in many cases uh, but to be in the equity markets, but they right. do have a choice about how they hedge uh, that exposure, and, and, and they've chosen gold. When, when the Chinese buy gold as a general statement, is it bars of gold? Is it old Kruger Reds? Is it <laughs> bracelets? Are they down at Tiffany's in Shanghai buying some gold bauble? What, what do you buy when you buy gold in China? Well, it's a, it's a mix. Um, between uh, uh, China and India, 50% um, of all the jewelry, gold jewelry in the world is bought. And wow. uh, roughly it's a two thirds uh, uh, jewelry and one third a barn coin. So, and the, the investors who are looking specifically to, to hedge themselves more from equity market and property market weakness we you know, will we'll favor the barn coins. So do we have a, a sense here where gold should be? I mean, it just is set all time highs every day. I'm not sure people have a sense of how to value this thing. Well, yes, I would agree. And um, uh, I think that's a universal uh, uh, problem where certainly uh, to look at cost of production uh, won't help you at all uh, because the market is well above. Uh, the average uh, all in sustained costs of production or any measure that you want to look at um, with maybe except for one or two gold mines in the whole world. Um, uh, what you would, uh, the, and some of the traditional barometers also are not working very well. Uh, for example, uh, we were looking for 150, 160 basis points. When I say we, I mean Wall Street in January, that's contracted to below 75 basis points of cuts, that would normally have led you to think that gold would recalibrate lower uh, between January and now. But the opposite has happened. Um, real rates are positive. Uh, that should uh, be providing headwinds. Uh, and the dollar has been reasonably firm. None of those things seem to be making a huge impact. And, and, and what I would add is I think the geopolitical element uh, has been very strong. Uh, we've seen a lot of geopolitically led safe haven buying are coming in. And there's there's academic studies to show that gold hedges well against geopolitical risk as well as it does against financial market risk. So I would say right now we are in, in a bit of a no man's land here where, where the traditional issues are, are not having, uh, 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 would not provide you with the guidance that you would normally think. Now, over time, uh, physical demand outside of China is, is suffering. Uh, uh, it was down last year in India. Uh, a 10 gram bar in India is now 71,000 rupees, double what it was just a few years ago. Uh, jewelry demand uh, is declining. Most people that bought coins um, uh, have already wanted to buy coins have already done so. And I would suspect that if we get an equities correction, and I'm not saying that we will, that's well outside my, my pay grade, but that itself could uh, bring an end to some of the safe haven uh, portfolio-led buying that's coming into gold.